when you see them here in the limitless expanses of the blue oceans, it's hard to think of them like this, confined to tanks. Yeah, they belong out there in the wild. At least that's the hope of marine biologist and adventurer Andreas Haida and his crew as they set out on a journey to the edge of the map to come face to face with orca whales in a way few will ever see them. Diving into Arctic waters, risking life and limb to swim with the killer whales. Part of our motivation about being out there is to, to show the, the orcas and the whales in their natural elements. To us and everyone that sees them, it's very obvious that these animals does not belong in captivity. Because even though these mighty beasts are the apex predators of the sea, they are the ones at risk. A firestorm tonight over a proposal to ban a very popular attraction at SeaWorld. The company is now launching a big PR blitz. It is attacking the credibility of a stinging documentary that explores the death of a SeaWorld trainer. It was four years ago Blackfish made waves for aquatic theme parks. Highlighting what the filmmaker claims are the cruel realities of killer whale capture. When the whole hunt was over, there were three dead whales in the net. And underscoring the risk the trainers face when they dive into the tanks for performances. He said, there's been an accident and a trainer was killed. The backlash against one-time staples like SeaWorld. I caught SeaWorld! Almost immediately tangible. I often look out at the beautiful ocean in which the whales confined at SeaWorld had freedom. Orca whale breeding programs by and large ended in the U.S. Whale shows as we knew them permanently canceled. But now Asian markets are getting into the act. Has the effect of blackfish caught on globally in Asia? We are making rapid progress in the West, whereas in the East, they are going backwards. That's the new battleground. China has developed a booming appetite for aquatic entertainment, with over 40 sites across the country and more under construction. Premier parks like Chamelong have already angered conservationists with their beluga whale shows. But recently, the company began acquiring orcas, captured from Russian seas. The live captures are then allegedly transported by truck to China, where there are no federal animal welfare laws regulating their care. These are the ones that actually hunt and kill other dolphins, seals, sea lions, etc. So when they get caught and they get put in a tank, they know how to hunt. I'm very concerned about the safety of these trainers. Chinese state media releasing the first videos of the Chimalong orca whales earlier this year. It started with nine at one facility. Now we know there's four in a second facility. The concern is that if Chimalong or this second facility, Dalian, are successful, there's going to be another one that's going to be, I want an orca. I want three orcas. I want nine orcas. Who knows? Video and social media, a crucial tool for activists like Dr. Rose. We are doing everything we can to reach as many people as possible. These viral videos, they're getting literally bird's eye views that we've never had of these animals before. They are on the top of the food chain and they are incredibly smart. You can see that by being in the water with them. As a storyteller, you want to share this. Dubbed a modern day Viking, Andreas's trek to find the killer whales is not an easy one. We have to sail for seven to nine days up along the Norwegian coast, covering about two thirds of it. It takes over a week to reach Tromso, a town in northern Norway near the whales' freezing feeding grounds. Like most of the year, these uh, workers are out in open water where it's very difficult to follow them. Andreas captains a sailboat, the Barba. He also invites an unlikely crewmate, Floridian and former orca trainer Jess Cope. For her, a lifelong whale lover, this trip has intensely personal meaning. I have a picture of me from when I'm six years old sitting on Shamu. Fast forward about 20 years later, I've got a video of me doing the whale show at the Miami Aquarium. Doing a show like that, it's not about the people clapping in the audience. It really is about the relationship that you have with these animals that you've built over so many years. Shame, shame, shame on you! Shame. But she says once Blackfish was released, things started to change. It was just a very sad and disheartening experience to have all of a sudden our career be negatively viewed 
Eventually, Jess transitioned to careers, and Miami Seaquarium stopped doing traditional whale shows. But after connecting with Andreas online, she couldn't pass up an opportunity to swim with orcas again. Hey, heading to the airport. Bye, Florida. She sets off to Norway. Just landed in Oslo. I'm so excited. It looks very cold outside. And boards the Barba. Home see home. From there, they set off into the freezing waters. They must endure sub-zero temperatures, navigate through snowstorms and polar nights. Some of the worst sailing is when you get caught in uh, bad weather. And deal with cramped conditions below deck. Hello. <laughs> then there's the matter of actually finding the whales. I see two boats, two fishing vessels. No whales yet. But eventually, this is crazy their black fins over the waves. I've never seen anything so beautiful in my life. Once we see whales, we approach them gently, and then sometimes we just hang around for hours, and then at some point they will start coming up to the boat once they are relaxed and calm. I was so excited. I was just like, let's go, let's go. It's finally time to suit up. We're ready to go swimming. Even though these animals are fierce hunters, they have only wetsuits for protection. <laughs> They're exceptionally powerful. They could kill you in a second, and they still choose not to. They dive in and come face to face with the mighty orcas. It was just really incredible to see them there in their natural habitat. I got, like, so close adding the human elements to a documentary. People are, to a greater extent, able to identify themselves with the story that's being told. Putting them one step closer to achieving their goal, raising awareness for the well-being of these gentle giants in the wild. And for Jess, giving her a new outlet for the calling she felt all those years ago. It did spark back up that enthusiasm to continue to work with marine mammals, continuing to grow that passion that I can hopefully share with other people all over the world. For Nightline, I'm Gloria Riviera. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.